Welcome to a real cult classic, Intermission with Megs. I've been watching a lot of X-Files lately, so this week we're going to talk about David Duchovny. Go grab your popcorn, hit the restroom, and stretch your legs because this is Intermission with Megs. Also, before we get into this one, there are going to be some adult themes just in case you're listening around sensitive ears. David William Duchovny was born on August 7, 1960 in New York, New York. He was born to Omran Ami Duchovny, who was a publicist and writer, and Margaret, who they called Meg. I've never actually met a Margaret who was called Meg before, so that's cool to me. But she was Scottish, so that's probably why. David was the middle of three kids, with an older brother and a younger sister. He attended the Collegiate School for Boys in Manhattan with... John F. Kennedy Jr., and he excelled academically, graduating as head boy. But that had a lot to do with his mother, who grew up in a small town in Scotland where the only way out was education, and so education was a huge focus in the Duchovny household. After graduating from high school in 1978, he continued on to Princeton, where he graduated summa cum laude in 1982 with a bachelor's in English Lit. He also played volleyball, and his poems earned him an honorable mention from the Academy of American Poets. And then he got a little overachievy. That's a word I just made up. When he continued on to Yale for his master's in English Lit. He also started working on a PhD, which he has yet to finish. Keep climbing that ivy tower, David. While working on his academic career at Yale, David started attending acting class, which led him to getting work in commercials and off-Broadway plays. He ultimately left Yale and set his sights on Hollywood in 1987. It was a choice that would ultimately end up paying off. He auditioned for a slew of sitcoms in the late 1980s, including Full House, and I mean he auditioned for every male lead. Danny, Jesse, and Uncle Joey. Now, if you ever want to know what kind of person you're talking to, call Joey Uncle Joey, and if they get mad, delete that person from your life forever. Just take it from me. Sitcoms didn't end up being David's forte, but he did land a small part in the 1988 film Working Girl with Melanie Griffith, Harrison Ford, Joan Cusack, and Sigourney Weaver. He would continue landing small film roles before making his way to TV in 1990 as Denise Bryson on Twin Peaks. David would continue to appear on bigger budget films like Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead with Christina Applegate and another one of my favorites, Beethoven, an absolute cinematic masterpiece. In 1992, he landed a reoccurring role on the scandalous Red Shoe Diaries, but then everything would change immensely. Chris Carter had been working at Disney and had grown weary of the content he had been working on there when he decided to write the pilot for a show centered around alien abductions and other conspiracies. His initial pitch was rejected by Fox, but after reworking the pilot and returning for another pitch, the network commissioned the pilot episode. Chris drew on other shows like The Twilight Zone and movies like Silence of the Lambs to develop the premise of the show. Coincidentally, Twin Peaks heavily inspired the mood for the show. The following year, David's manager handed him the script for the pilot episode of Chris's new show, The X-Files. While David had been focusing on feature films, he liked the script and opted to audition for the lead role of Agent Fox Mulder. While the casting agent loved him, Chris thought that David might not be the brightest bulb in the box because he talked too slow and asked him to try to imagine himself as an FBI agent in the future, which is kind of funny when you know David's academic background. The X-Files premiered in 1993 and launched David into a level of stardom that he wasn't necessarily prepared for. He said that starring in the X-Files wasn't just any kind of celebrity. It was global recognition and it was strange. It felt big, unprecedented. I liked certain parts of it, then you realize it's insane. Any room you walk into changes. Despite the demanding schedule of filming 25 episodes a season, ah, remember the days when shows premiered in September, ran until June, and you got more than 10 episodes? I missed them. David still managed to fit in some film projects like 1997's Playing God with Angelina Jolie. You know how I feel about her. 1997 also happened to be the year that David met fellow actor Tay Leone. The couple reportedly only dated for eight weeks before taking the leap into marriage, walking down the aisle on May 13, 1997. 
His marriage would have a huge impact on the X-Files. While the show had filmed in Vancouver for the first few seasons, David grew tired of being apart from his wife. It's also been said that he was tired of the rain, but now LA is getting rained out, so I guess that's what you get for making all those jokes about our rainfall, huh, David? David's co-star Gillian Anderson was also itching to get back to the US, and so Chris relented and moved production to LA for the sixth season. Season 5's final episode, fittingly called The End, was the last to feature the Vancouver crew. Logistically, moving the show to LA was a bit of a nightmare as it required sourcing an all-new crew for filming. Although, the 1998 X-Files movie was filmed in Vancouver. Blessed be. And I'm sure that Chris was glad he made that move for David when, prior to the release of the seventh season, David filed a lawsuit against 20th Century Fox claiming that they had undersold the rights to the show to affiliates, thus squashing a huge chunk of David's royalties. He also accused Chris of accepting compensation and not telling anyone about it. The lawsuit was settled and he ended up with a chill $20 million in his pocket, but the lawsuit damaged his professional relationships. He also had some contract issues in which he wasn't actually contracted to work after the seventh season, but after settling that, he just opted not to return to the show full-time and would only appear in half of season eight. Around the time that he was settling up his lawsuit, Tay and David welcomed their first fetal collaboration, West, in April of 1999. He continued acting in films like 2000's Return to Me with Minnie Driver and 2001 Zoolander. He also made an appearance in an episode of Sex and the City where he played Jeremy, Carrie's ex-high school boyfriend who she is pleased to discover has only gotten better looking, but then finds out he's actually checked himself into a mental health facility. In June of 2002, Tay and David welcomed their second fetal collab, Kid. Which is, coincidentally, what people some people wish I would call fetal collaborations. Go figure. In 2007, he landed a starring role in Showtime's Californication. David played Hank Moody, a New Yorker who has relocated to LA for his writing career, who was a womanizing hedonist. I wonder if David knew how closely his life was about to imitate art. David continued to work regularly, and in 2008, he returned to the X-Files, reprising his role as Fox Mulder. But not everything that happened in 2008 was as joyous as his return to the beloved series. Back in 1997, before he married Tay, rumors had swirled that David was a sex addict. He vehemently denied it in an interview with Playgirl, stating that, I'm not a sex addict, I have never been to those meetings, it's hurtful to my family, and if I was involved with a woman in a monogamous relationship, it would be hurtful to her. And he was right. It must have been very hurtful for Tay when news broke that David would be checking himself into a 35-day treatment program at the Meadows Rehab Center in Arizona for sex addiction. While it doesn't appear that the pair have ever confirmed if David stepped out or not, insider sources claim that he had cheated multiple times over the course of their marriage. Tay's suspicions continued to grow and it was only after she confronted him that he admitted to the affairs. She then gave him an ultimatum. Either he got help or their marriage was donezo. Some claim that Tay was not all that innocent herself and that she had an intimate relationship with her Smell of Success co-star Billy Bubble T. Thornton and that David had found scandalous texts on his wife's Blackberry from the aforementioned BBT. Billy Bob? I really hope that's not true. That's icky. Tay and David would reconcile in 2009, but would separate again in 2011. Their divorce was finalized in 2014 with an agreement to share custody of their children. It was rumored, yes, more rumors, that David had been secretly dating his X-Files co-star Gillian Anderson and that the two were secretly living together around this time. The chemistry between the two had been noted since their first reading together, but there were also many reports that the two hated each other during the early seasons of The X-Files. Then again, Jillian did tell Huffington Post that they were attracted to each other. Maybe we just love an enemies to lovers trope way too much. What actually happened, we'll probably never know. But regardless, the truth is out there. You can deny all the things I've seen, all the things I've discovered, but not for much longer. Because too many others know what's happening out there. And no one, no government agency has jurisdiction over the truth.
Now, Tay did actually go for her co-star and started dating Madam Secretary co-star Tim Daly, although it's rumored that the two split in 2023, we actually have no idea, because Tay said she wasn't going to talk about her relationships publicly after David, and she stuck to it. Proud of her. Californication ran for seven seasons and earned a lot of critical acclaim, including a Golden Globe for David. In 2015, David's new show Aquarius premiered, which he produced. It focused on an LAPD detective, played by David, in 1960s LA. And then David found his way back to Vancouver. Oh yes, good old rain Coover, where he reprised his role as Fox Mulder in the revival of The X-Files. I can't remember if this has been included in a previous podcast. I know we kind of talked about it, but I might have edited it out. But Amy and I did go to one of the outdoor shoots to take photos for our work, and I got the stink eye from an extra. David and Jillian were in a car only a few feet away, and I didn't get to meet them. I was devastated. By 2017, he reprised his role as Denise Bryson in Twin Peaks, had released his first album, and published two books. He also met girlfriend Monique around this time. She is 33 years his junior. In 2020, he appeared in the Craft reboot, The Craft Legacy as the creepy dad, and continued to work throughout the pandemic, but then the writer's strike hit. David's agent suggested he do what everyone was doing, and that was start a podcast. <laughs> like I'm doing right now. Fail Better premiered in May of 2024 and focused on how perceived failures were actually opportunities in disguise. While David may say that he failed as a movie star, he did direct, produce, and star in the 2023 film Reverse the Curse, which was adapted from his novel Bucky Fucking Dent, and recently appeared in other films like Adam the First and Pet Cemetery: Bloodline. He does do a good horror, doesn't he? With four more projects in the hopper and a successful podcast, also multiple novels, maybe failing like David wouldn't be so bad. Well, that's it. That's all I have for you today. I hope you have a great weekend and... Oh, looks like it's time to get back to your seats. <laughs>